everyone so today I'm doing a, a very kind of personal story time kind of video uh, a little background just about me and I know I've touched on this a couple of times in the past but I haven't done a whole video dedicated to it and I really wanted to for a long time because it's so extremely important and personal to me and I want to help other people who might be going through the same thing um, yes my hair is a mess right now I actually just got out of the shower well I obviously did my makeup but I got out of the shower spent about an hour on my makeup and decided that I do not have the energy to <laughs> blow dry and do anything with my hair so I'm letting it just naturally dry and do its thing and I thought about trying to do something more presentable for this video but you guys know I, I like to keep it a lot more real on this channel and I thought well if I wouldn't do it in real life like why should I do it for the camera so anyway uh, yeah that is gonna be what it is and I do have some like major major rootage going on here I'm gonna go get like the whole black thing fixed uh, this weekend which I'm really excited about um, but yeah just ignore the disaster <laughs> that is going up here so today for you guys I'm talking about uh, my scoliosis which I have been diagnosed now with it for uh, let's see here about eight years I think I found out about it when I was first 12 years old and it's something that has so highly impacted the way that I've lived my life since then and for some of you who maybe aren't so familiar with it it's basically uh, where you have a curve in your spine so most people's spine is supposed to be straight or you know a lot of people have a very very minimal curve maybe like you know somewhere under five degrees I uh, think that with the progression of mine it got all the way I think up to like 42 degrees and I'll insert some pictures that I have of uh, you know x-rays of what my spine look like um, it was very challenging for me because I found out at such like a such an interesting age I think that from the time you're about you know 12 to 14 it's really really rough like those years suck for almost everyone um, it's sort of that middle school age where everybody is extremely judgmental and it was really really hard for me to accept that I had this condition which affected my physical appearance because at that time I wanted to feel perfect I wanted to be perfect I didn't want to have anything that people could pin against me and this was such a this was such a huge thing and and um, it was just, I remember it being so insanely tough for me to wrap my mind around and for me to become okay with. And I don't really think I ever did feel okay with it until last year when I got my surgery. But kind of uh, rewinding back because I will touch on my surgery, but I think I'm going to do like a whole series of these types of videos for any of you girls or boys out there. I think that scoliosis is a condition that mainly affects women. But for anybody out there that is experiencing this or has gone through this or just wants some advice, especially if you're younger, um, you know, it's it's common, but it was one of those things where I don't remember anybody in my class really having it, so I felt like an outsider. And it was really strange too because while it is genetic, um, we couldn't really trace anybody back in our family that had it and so it sort of just seemed to pop out of nowhere so my family my friends nobody had experience with it so I felt like I was really alone in trying to figure out how to deal with this uh, it's typically not a condition that inhibits you you know to an extreme or anything um, it does at least for me it made it hard for me to do any sort of physical activity so I never really participated in sports or any sort of you know extracurricular activities that involved uh, you know contact physical sporty type of stuff is what I'm trying to say which is okay because I've never been into athletics in my entire life like even before I was diagnosed sports were never anything that interested me and then obviously now that I'm older never being able to participate in them they're still not something that I really have any yearning to go do uh, I think it would definitely be more difficult if I was extremely athletic and then I had this happen and then it was like oh my gosh I can't you know go do all those amazing things that I used to love but that was never anything that happened to me it did however make classes like PE and stuff really uncomfortable because uh, all the rest of you know the kids in my class could do everything and I had to be really careful about what I was doing to my body and it again at that kind of an age it was I remember it just being so embarrassing to walk up to my PE teacher and tell her or him that I can't do this um, and it, just sitting on the sidelines or you know when we would do things that are mandatory like running the mile or whatever um, I remember feeling so embarrassed because I would always be 
one of the people that would come in last because it was so difficult for me. Um, and I just remember that just being so, so insanely awful because I just felt like I was being so judged and I, and I didn't want that kind of restraint. And then uh, soon after that, we started talking to doctors about treatment or trying to prevent it from getting worse because uh, scoliosis usually shows up when you're starting to grow, like when you're physically getting taller. And uh, typically, your spine will stop curving after you have gone through your entire growth spurt and certain you know things have fused and you're you know as tall and as big as you're going to be. Um, that's typically when your curve will stop getting worse. And so the whole idea is to prevent it while you know you're younger and while you're still growing prevent it and stop it from getting worse during that time because during that time it can really go out of control and so I was braced because uh, I think that when I was first diagnosed with it I think I had around a 30 degree curve like I said it progressively actually got worse and it got up to around a 42 or 43 but it was already pretty substantial being at 30 degrees and so I was put into what's called a Boston brace it's not like you're what you've seen on TV where um, you know the brace goes like all the way Way up to the neck and it's got like this weird metal thing around it and it truly is just like a big constricting like cage that's not what this brace is and from what I've researched and you know going through this I don't really think that they use those types of braces very often uh, the Boston brace has kind of replaced that since it's just a more modern approach um, but it still is a very very uncomfortable device I'll see if I can like insert a picture of one um, I think throughout my diagnosis I had about three different ones because about every year you have to go in and get refitted for them also as things like your boobs grow and you start to get wider or thinner or whatever in some areas you have to adjust it but what is it what it basically is it's a big plastic body hugging cage thing uh, that has different kind of foam pads in it that press up against your ribs and your spine and your tor and your just entire torso in different ways to help align. So if your spine is, you know, curving out this way and curving out this way, the foam pads will press in this way and then will press in this way to hope to try to get it to align at some point. Uh, with scoliosis, there's nothing other than the surgery in which you can get actual correction, which was really frustrating because I remember um, thinking, you know, I'm going to have this for the rest of my life and there's nothing other than an in extremely invasive back surgery that I can do to ever correct it. Uh, and I remember this being like a big misconception amongst a lot of my family and a lot of my friends because everybody was expecting me to just get better and for me to get straighter. But what the brace actually does is it just prevents it from getting worse. But when you take it off, it's ultimately going to go back to its all curved out state. So that was, again, something very frustrating, very hard for me to accept because I just wanted it to get better and I didn't want to feel like I had this deformity for the rest of my life. So I was put into the Boston brace. Um, I was braced for about three or four years and again that was extremely difficult. They are very big. They're very bulky. They show almost under anything that you wear and I think I'm going to do a different video on bracing and clothing because for any of you guys or girls that uh, may be experiencing this it is very difficult to find what you can wear without being it obvious that you have like this big clunky 20 pound brace thing underneath you. Uh, and I hated that. I absolutely hated this growing up because I wanted to be able to wear whatever I wanted. You know, girls that even just things like, you know, like this sort of a polo shirt I couldn't wear because it would just jut out and it would just look like I was wearing like a cardboard box or something underneath my shirt. Um, things like just regular t-shirts uh, I couldn't wear. Anything that was at all slim fit uh, on the torso area, things like tank tops, I couldn't wear those. Um, and it was really, really frustrating. And I remember remember that brace just being, oh my god, of course any brace they have to wear day in and day out and this isn't something that I just had to wear during the day or something that I could just wear at night. I had to wear this 24-7. The only time you can take it off, at least for me, was when I went to go into the shower. So I got a whole, like throughout the entire freaking 24 hour day, I got a whole 15 minute reprieve from it and then I had to put it back on again. And I remember trying to find things like uh, camis and stuff because you don't put it on bare skin, you want to put like a a camisole or something under it so you don't get chafing everywhere. I remember stuff like that even being uncomfortable because where like the stitching was, the brace is so tight and so constricting that that stitching would just start to like inlay into your skin and when you took it off, oh my god. 
ugh. It was just disgusting. Of course, you got super sweaty underneath it, and the whole thing was just gross. And then, like I said, trying to find stuff to then put on top of it to disguise it was almost impossible. Over time, of course, I did find some different tips and tricks, which, like I said, I might do a separate video on. Um, and I was able to find things that, you know, would work. But I just remember being really frustrated because all of my pretty dresses and stuff like that, um, I couldn't really wear those anymore because I just didn't feel confident and I didn't feel like I looked good in them. So yes, the whole clothing situation was uh, <laughs> very interesting, very difficult. And I think that that is actually the whole reason why I started getting so much more into makeup because growing up, I was never really a big clothing or makeup person. I liked them both, but um, I think that after you know my style started to get so inhibited and after I just wasn't able to wear everything I wanted, I loved makeup because I could put anything on my face and it didn't matter. My That was like the one thing that I felt like my scoliosis didn't impact was what I did up here. And so I started watching YouTube videos and I started collecting because this was such a free range for me and I could do anything I wanted, unlike everywhere else on my body where, like I said, I was constricted uh, physically. I was constricted, I felt like even sometimes socially because I became so ostracized from certain groups within my school because people just didn't understand it. And I think that, you know, now it's totally different because obviously I'm around mature adults, but when you're in middle school, I mean, girls and boys, everybody are just, they're just awful, awful people and so judgmental. <laughs> it's such an awful time and I don't understand how we are so shitty at that age, but we totally are. And um, I just felt like I said, so ostracized from all of my friends and stuff because nobody really wanted to go hang out with the scoliosis girl. And I remember just, oh my God, just how heartbreaking and how hard that was for me to try to get over. Um, so, you know, having makeup and having something that I could, you know, like I said, have total free reign with and not have to worry about my scoliosis at all impacting was wonderful. And I think that that's really, you know, what got me into it. Fast forward a little bit and I was eventually uh, all grown up and all of my, I think they judge it by like your hip bones and stuff, all of my bones and everything were, were all fused together and I was able to uh, get out of my brace, which was so extremely exciting. I remember the last day I had to wear that and I remember that the day I got to take it off I immediately, I think I went out on an extreme shopping trip and I purchased tons of different things because I was like, look it, I don't have to wear big baggy clothing anymore. I can actually wear stuff that hugs my body and makes me look good. And so that was extremely exciting. And I think that that started around like my freshman year of high school was when I was able to take that off. So that was great. I was still going to doctors very regularly to make sure that everything was good, but for the meantime, Everything was set. I was super happy. I still had my, I think it was like I said, 32 degree curve or something around there. Um, but other than that, I was, you know, I was set. I felt okay. So that continued on for a little bit and eventually my doctor visits got less regular um, after you know being out of the brace and like I said all of my growth plates fusing and everything uh, doctors just don't require the ego seam as much because they just kind of assume that you know everything's going to stay the same um, but I do have to go in for annual checkups and so uh, I think it was my when did it, when was it? Junior, senior year, uh, when I went in for an annual checkup, oh, it was junior year. So junior year, when I went in for an annual checkup, they noticed that my curve went from that 32, 35 range, somewhere in there, up to about a 39, 40 range. And so that was really concerning because after your spine has reached about 45 degrees, that's when doctors start to strongly recommend surgery because you uh, risk implications of, you know, of course, not being able to to walk right but also your spine hitting certain important organs and my spine in particular was getting really close to my lungs so uh, the talk of surgery started to come up which I remember again and I know that I use the term frustrating a lot but there's really nothing that I can think of that more accurately describes my feeling at that point uh, but if you can imagine I mean uh, being put in a brace that has totally degraded your self-confidence and has made you just feel like crap for years and years and years and having to do that and having no other option um, and doing that in hopes that you can avoid this outcome and then to ultimately still have to have the surgery was so, it was 
it really made me angry. Again, frustrating, really, really sad, but I was so angry about it because I felt like I wasted those years of my life feeling inadequate and feeling uh, feeling so alone and feeling <laughs> so, again, just ostracized. And um, I don't know, it was just, again, they were such uh, formable years of my life and uh, I felt like I just wasted my time and like, what was the point? You know, if I could go back and just have the surgery, obviously that's what I would have done because the brace was awful and it was nothing that I would ever, ever want to do again in my life. And so, uh, you know, we were talking to doctors and we, you know, I had no other option. Like I said, my spine was getting really, really close to my lungs, which was scary. And it looked like at that point, if, you know, like I mentioned earlier, typically after you're fully grown, your spine stops and uh, you're just going to be that way forever. But saying that I was fully grown and my spine was still curving, the whole, you know, kind of fear was, is it going to continually get worse and worse and worse for the rest of my life? So let's have the surgery and let's stop it so that we don't have to worry about, you know, something awful happening like, you know, my lungs getting punctured. So uh, we set up a date and that was about, I think, six months out from that annual exam where we found out that I had to have the surgery because uh, the guy in my particular area that does the surgery is like just way booked out. He's an absolutely amazing doctor, one of the best in the area. And so, uh, you know, it was really important that I get with him and I know my parents were really concerned about that. So we had to book it out quite a ways. Um, but let's see here. So that happened back in, I think it was actually just last year. So 2014, January of 2014 is when I had the surgery. And I do think I posted a surgery vlog on this uh, channel, which you guys can either go try to find. I'll try to have a link to it down in the description bar and you guys can kind of see a little bit more of how that experience went. So that entire vlog just helps to detail more about how I was feeling. Watching that video today, it is so hard for me not to just start bawling because by far out of anything I've ever done in my entire life that was the absolute worst most painful most excruciating experience I have ever been through and I think that it has made me so incredibly strong I now look at physical pain in a totally different way but even mentally going through something like that I mean it just changes your perception on things because it's you know it's obviously what they what they go in and do is they literally straighten your spine so they cut you open um, straighten out your spine they put rods in there to make sure that they stay uh, stay straight and then they pin it all together and everything to I, I mean I don't know what the science behind it really is but the point is is that they turn you like into bionicles so that you know your spine will stay straight and it's I, I mean I'm sure you guys can imagine how <laughs> extremely painful that is and for anybody going into the surgery I don't want to scare you because obviously I'm here and I'm really happy and I've gone through it you know how you know when you're a woman after you give birth your brain kind of puts part of that into like an amnesic state so that you can start to forget it I feel like the same thing happened to me because there's certain parts of it that almost feel like a blackout where I just can't even remember and so uh, while you're going through it it sucks but looking back you it doesn't it's not as bad <laughs> but yes that was really really hard and I actually just recently watched that surgery vlog and there's things like in the video um, I have a really hard time trying to catch my brain Breath. I mean, you're under the knife for like nine hours, and so I don't think your lungs are properly working during that time. And so for a good month afterwards, you are constantly not able to catch your breath, and you have to take little tiny breaths, and you can't even get a full sentence out because you have to breathe like 50 times just to get a single word out, and that was so frustrating. And then I remember after my surgery, once I was back home, doing things like filming. If you watch some of my videos, um, you know, closely after that surgery vlog, I have a really hard time talking because I just cannot seem to catch my breath. And I forgot about that. Um, I also, for three months, you can't bend, twist, or lift. And... I mean, think about that. Think about how many times in a day you bend over to reach something, you twist to like say hi to somebody, or you just lift something up. And you cannot do any of those things for three whole fucking months. And it is awful. You are so physically, if I thought I was physically limited before, I mean, you just, you just are basically become like a vegetable and have to sit in your home all day and not do anything. And that's what I did. Uh, luckily, I was able to take off a good amount of time from work and just heal up. But I just remember it was so 
it was so difficult and I hated having to ask everybody around me for help. And, you know, Bryce and I were obviously together back then um, and he was so extremely helpful with the whole process and I'm so grateful for that. And I think that if you're going to be going through a similar thing, you definitely need to have people by your side that can just physically help you do things because you are so limited as to what you can do. Um, but just even the mental support was great. Uh, and I definitely think that the whole whole thing from you know the time I had my diagnosis when I was 12 to last year when I had my surgery has made me I think it's formed so much of who I am and I think that without that experience I think I would, could have been a totally different person it made me very non-judgmental because I was so judged back in middle school because of it and like I said, it gave me a whole different perspective on physical pain and also mentally, I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's your body. It's the one thing that you have that is unlike anybody else and you can't just get another one. And having certain deformities and stuff like that happen is, it's just mentally, it's really, really, again, it was hard for me to wrap my head around. And I think that now it's, it's just made me just such a, you know, a better person. I know that sounds so cheesy and that sounds so ridiculous because everybody says that, but I definitely, I think about that. Like who would I have been if I didn't have that? Uh, so when I got out of the brace freshman year, um, I was still kind of limited as far as what I could do, you know, for like PE and gym class and stuff. So I got stuck into a study hall class with Bryce, which is how we met. And so the crazy thing is, is if I didn't have this happen to me, I mean, who who, who knows where I would be now? Um, I don't know if Bryce and I would be married. I don't know if I would have ever met him. And so uh, when I think about that, and I talked about this in my wedding vows, I am so extremely happy that this happened to me because I was able to meet him. And like I said, it was able to make me, you know, this person who I feel like, even though physically I'm still not very strong, I feel like mentally I'm way stronger because of it. And for any of you guys who may be watching this that have, you know, that have had the diagnosis or maybe you're approaching the surgery or maybe you're currently braced or who knows, uh, know that in the end, I mean, there are going to be so many weird opportunities, like I said, getting put from gym to study hall, stuff like that that shows up that you're going to look back on and you're going to think if you know, this never happened to me, then I wouldn't be here. You know, it's kind of like the whole butterfly effect thing. And it's not that you have to be thankful that you've had it because it, like I said, it was so painful and it was so hard for me to try to get through. But, uh, you know, I think it's good to think about the positives of a situation, especially, you know, this kind of a situation where it is just, it's just really horrible. And it's, I, you know, my big fear is in the future, because like, like I said, it is genetic, having kids or grandkids that have it because of me in a sense. Um, that's one of my biggest fears because I would never in a million years ever want my own kid or my grandkid or my niece or whatever to ever have to go through this because it is so hard and it is so painful and I couldn't imagine, you know, sitting there and, you know, if they had to have the surgery or whatever, I couldn't even imagine what that would be like because it's just something that I never want anybody else to ever, you know, close to me to ever have to experience. But if you are the one currently experiencing it, it is going to make you so strong and you are going to be able to eventually embrace it. For a really long time, I was scared to tell anybody I had scoliosis because it was very embarrassing actually for me. Um, like I said, I think because when I was diagnosed it was during a very like judgmental period of my life and so for the longest time through high school and stuff I barely told anybody um, unless you were like my absolute closest bestest friend because uh, I was so embarrassed by the whole thing and now I actually uh, because of the rods and the pins in my back and everything I made out of titanium I a couple of well, it was a couple of weeks ago, it was about a month ago, I uh, celebrated, you know, the whole situation by getting uh, the periodic symbol for titanium on the back of my neck. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it here or not, but if not, I'll try to post a video on it because I'm kind of wearing, like, not a great shirt to be able to show it since it is collared. But uh, now I've started to, the point is of that is that I've actually embraced it and, um, you know, I've marked it on my body because it's who I am and it's 
such an important event and such an important thing to who I am today and I want to be reminded of that constantly and uh, I'm not embarrassed of it anymore I'm proud of it because like I said I feel like I am so much stronger uh, because I had to go through that and I'm proud of that I'm proud that I feel like I'm a strong person and even though physically I still can't do a whole lot you know with rods and all that stuff in your back I have to be really careful with what I do um, I don't you know things like gardening and stuff like that are really hard for me and I know in the future if Bryce and I decide to have kids kids um, that's gonna be really difficult too but the point is is all those little road bumps and all of those things that for the rest of my life I'm gonna to have to deal with that are gonna be a struggle um, they're gonna make me stronger and stronger and stronger and I feel like a better person each and every day which is great so if there's one good thing to get out of all of it I guess that it's that and to always remind yourself too that there's people out there that have it a million times worse and you know I could be paralyzed or uh, there's a million other things that could be wrong with me other than this and so I feel like this on the scale of things is quite minimal and I'm still very lucky to have uh, all of the other things that I have in this world and so for me just have to deal with this is um, is okay because I get such an amazing life outside of that I am hoping to do kind of a video on um, clothing and style and a little bit more into the bracing part of things and then I'm going to be doing I think a surgery video so that if any of you are going into it you know what to expect and sort of just my little tips and my advice for it along the way what I wanted to do with this video is just give you guys an overview and tell you and kind of let you in in that part of my life because I know I've touched on it but I've never actually been able to form cohesive enough thoughts to you know do a whole video on it so I hope you guys enjoy this please let me know any of you that are currently dealing with it, um, feel free to contact me. You can email me, PM me, uh, comment down below, anything. I, I want to be able to support you guys. And if you guys need advice or just want somebody to talk to who's going through the same thing, definitely contact me because I, I want to be here for you guys and I want to help you. And uh, I think that that's all I have for today. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, thank you all so much for being such a big part of my life and for letting me open up about these kinds of things to you. And for being supportive because even through my back surgery you guys were some of the most supportive people during all of that and I'm sure many of you will remember uh, that time last year because I got so many amazing comments from you guys and just so much support and it was so so incredibly kind so uh, I will talk to you guys in my next video and I hope you guys have an amazing day <laughs> bye